Well, hello, cyber students. This is our guidance for case number two. Uh, you've read the opening blurb. We are going to use the paid software data. <clears throat> and I want to know the duplications where we have the same vendor, date, and amount. Sort by count and then by dollar amount descending. And here we go. So, this is our paid software data. We are now going to create a query. We will usually use the query design. We are going to query the table called payments. And I want to know the same vendor date amount. And what I want to do is I want to count amount So, group by vendor, group by date, group by amount, and count the amount. And I'm interested in those cases where the count is greater than or equal to 2. This will actually just give us the duplicates, um, and it'll give us the details here and the duplicates. However, this is not sorted. So I need to sort by count descending and then by amount descending. And the little problem here is access will make this the dominant count and then this the secondary sort. I meant to say sort. I'm going to move this across there. And now it will be by count descending first and then by amount uh, descending second. And these things can be moved around access uh, understands what we want. I'm going to run this query. And here we have, wow, quite a while before we even get to the duplicates. These are the 24 tickets. So I want the top 10 over here. Uh, count down to 10. You know how the snipping tool works. And that should be number one. First 10 rows of output. Uh, use Excel, and what we want is we want the monthly totals. And so I'm going to go back in here, and I actually have my paid software data over here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not sure whether Excel can do monthly. So why don't we just go here. I'm going to do something called this field month. And I'm going to get the month from the date. So we will go equal month of C2. And now this tells me that this is month number one. And I'm going to copy this all the way down to the bottom. And watch what we're going to do here. We're going to get the plus sign. There's the plus sign. And a swift left uh, double click. And this should be copied all the way to the end. However, it's going to stop if there's a, a gap in my data. So just to check, I'm going to go to the bottom of the data. And I'm going to do that by going home and home. And I go right down. That is the last row. And it did copy that formula all the way down. I'm going to go back to the top again with control home. And now I'm going to get the monthly totals. Insert pivot table. And this uh, series of commands uh, might uh, differ a bit depending on which version of Excel you have. It's got the right range, and we'll do OK. Now, I want month as the rows, amount is the values, and it wants to sum of amount, and here we go, 1 through 12. I just need to know that my data is 2010 data only. So we're going to go sort oldest to newest. It starts at the beginning of 2010. Control home. Oops. Home and home. The last one is December of 2010. So all my data is 2010. Nothing is peeking out on either side. So it's got the 1 to 12 correct. Control home. Here we go. Month one, I have the sum here. And now it's just a case of we'll go file, 
open we go browse and this is you accounting 582 this periodic graph i just have the template here and it says put the monthly totals in here we can go right click copy right click paste and i have the monthly totals in here almost done monthly chart Voila! Looks pretty nice. Everything is formatted, but watch that uh, clause over here. We're not quite done yet. Change the color scheme, and I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, you're going to need to do the um, image and a more professional scheme. This is much easier than it used to be in the past because I've included a new Negrini cycle file for you. So we're going to go here, Excel. I'm going to close this. I don't need this anymore. Don't save. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do File, Open. And the data profile is discussed in the book. So we won't do it in the video here. I'm just asking you to do the data profile here. And there it is in the greeny cycle. I can see it there. Now, we have instructions over here. Instructions over there, instruction over there, and this has to do with the uh, digit graphs. Um, it's going to do the data profile quite automatically. This note here says I had to put some data in here so that uh, I don't get uh, error messages in the tables and I don't get graphs with no bars. So this is just a placeholder um, so that there's something there. And now I want to do the data profile. I need to go here, go to my data. There it is. I'm going to highlight the whole column amount. Copy. We go back to here, back to there, and paste. Now I have my real data here, as opposed to fake data. And just for completeness, I'm going to copy these formulas down to the end and get the plus sign, swift left, double click. And these formulas are all the way down to the end just to check that they are there. Home and home. This is the 38,176 uh, records plus a header. I'm good. I have data all the way down to here. It's looking good. Control home. So, I have the amount in here. Let me just check that it did pick things up correctly. There it is, 99, 99, 5. Just a little check, 99, 99, 5, 15. That's good. And voila! There's my tab called Data Profile. That's my data profile. Give me, a, uh, give me the image. Not scan the image, but do a slipping tool. Give me a screenshot of the image. I don't want the whole image, not this part here. Just uh, the important bits. That's your data profile. That's how easy it was. Number two, use Access. Uh, number four, Access or Excel. I prefer Excel. Uh, <laughs> I prefer Access. Let me save this here. Um, save. Duplicates. Query duplicates, we're okay. I can close this. I want to know how many invoices greater, equal to or greater than 6,000, but less than 7,000. Again, this is a query. Create, query design, add, close. And what I wanted to do is, I'm gonna put a mount here twice. Go up, Greek Sigma, give it a click. I wanted to count the amount where the amount is, and I could use greater than or equal to here, but there's a command in access between, between 6,000, and it includes, amazingly, between includes the two numbers that we enter here, 6,000 and 
less than 7,000, but here we go. I'm going to go less than 8,000. Between 6,000 and less than 8,000. And to get less than 8,000, I need to enter 7999.99. So it's going to take all the numbers from here to there, including both that I've entered here. And when I run this, I'm going to get the count, which is going to be the sum of A and B. If I just run it, I get the sum of A and B there. Back to design view. Um, and what you need to do is do your own query and do A and B separately. I'm just going to go query save. And this will be query um, select range. You can make any name up, and we'll do OK. And I'm actually going to go file close. We'll go file open, and we'll go to network traffic. So I closed page open network traffic, and here we are. We're back into network traffic. How many connections were equal to or greater than 2,000, but less than 3,000? Greater than 5, but less than 10. And this is going to be the same format of query. Create, query design, add the table. Go here, connections, connections back up to the Greek Sigma, count where, and here we're going to use, I'm going to make up two numbers here, yeah, you'll have to do the query yourself. Um, these numbers are generally small, I think. Go between, and we'll just uh, use the numbers from uh, the last example, 6,000 and 6999, these are integers. So I don't have decimals happening here. So remember the last one it said from 6,000 to just below 7,000? Well, that was the last data set, but I'm just demonstrating this here run. And there I get a number of zero actually. So uh, these counts, I think they're small. I'm just gonna go design view, and I'm going to save this query as query select range. We're good to go here. Uh, I think you'll like this. Use the Negrini cycle template. Run the first digit test greater than 10, and the first two digit tests greater than 10. So I'm going over here. We have run this on page software, and I'm going to use the same template to answer the next question. So I'm going to go File, Close, and I'm not going to save it. Don't save. Uh, you might want to save it. File, Open, Back, Open, Fresh. So I'm going to do these graphs. Here we go. I don't need page software anymore either, and I won't save this. I'm going to go here and open network traffic data. There we go. Now I'm going to go to connections, and this is rather large. It's going down 20,804. I'm going to do copy, back to Negrini cycle, paste. And I'm going to take this formula here, which is blank because these numbers are less than 10. Go here. And let's just go back to the question quickly. Run the first digit test on all the values greater than or equal to 10, greater than or equal to 10. Let's go here. First digit. There we go. If D2 greater than or equal to 10, it's good. It's doing what I wanted to do there. If D2 greater than or equal to 10, then give me the first two digits. And so when the number is greater than or equal to 10, I do get the first two digits or the first digits. 
And watch this little bit of magic. It said on the first digit test, screenshot of your Excel graph. Click on the tab, first digits. There's your graph. It's a very messy graph, but it is your first digit graph. And um, run the first two digit test, greater than or equal to 10, and I'm good. You don't even have to go and read all these um, notes about see the comment and see the comment and see the comment. You don't have to see the comments because you are not, um, you are just using it greater than or equal to 10. So we're good. First digits, second digits, first two. There's your graph. Screenshot, paste, good to go. Number eight. Did you inspect the connections numbers to conform to Benford's law? Give reasons. Well, I'm going to go back to the book here. Which data set should conform to Benford's law on page 97 of our textbook? Read the blurb over here. And an overall consideration is that there are more small items than big items for a data set to conform to Benford's law. In general, I don't think that this data set of connections has enough spread from lots of small numbers, fewer medium numbers, very few big numbers. I don't think it has a big enough spread for Benford's law to work. I actually think that these numbers are too clustered around some or other value. Um, they're too tightly packed, almost like um, a city like San Diego where the summer temperatures are all pretty close to each other, maybe winter temperatures are pretty close to each other, not enough spread for Benford's Law to happen. So um, that, would that would be a good enough answer for number eight. What conclusion? Use the first digit, MAD. Go back to the textbook, move up to page 115, Sorry, I don't mean to make it dizzy here. There we go. 115. This talks about the mean absolute deviation test. This is what I'm asking you about. So you need to have read a bit over here. And here's the table. So let's get back and answer the question. What conclusion can you draw with respect to use the first digit mad? and the first two digit mad. You actually only have one table. So we'll do the first two digits first. To go back to the Negrini cycle, go to tables. This is all the heavy lifting is happening here. Go to first two digit test, scroll down, and believe it or not, there's my mean absolute deviation, 0039. Go to my table. Here it is. If it's in this range, that's my conclusion. If it's in that range, that's my conclusion. So you can see the MAD. There it is, cell N93 in tables. You can see this table over here. The conclusion that you will draw is where is that mean absolute deviation? And it's one of those four rows over there. Um, I didn't know that you didn't have the first digit mean absolute deviation. So I will just go here to tables. The first digit mean absolute deviation is there. It is high. If you did have that table of the first digit mean absolute deviation, then the conclusion would be non-conformity. If I remember correctly, for the first digits, if it is above 0 0.015, if it's above 0 0.015, I'm talking about the first digits now. If it's above 0 0.015, it's non-conformity. So your answer here is first digit mean absolute deviation. It is above 
0.015. And the first digit conclusion is non-conformity. I'm just giving you the answer because I'm a nice person. You need to use this table uh, <coughs> on the pages, and you we're almost done here. Now we go. Identify the first two digits with the three largest spikes, and a spike is a case where we have an actual proportion that is above the Benford's Law proportion, and I'm looking for the biggest three spikes, but I am looking for the biggest three spikes using the Z statistic criterion. And if I go here, in this book, it's amazing what you find in books. Here we go, the Z statistic criterion. It's actually done for you in the Negrini cycle. Tables. First two digit test. There are my Z statistics. I want the three biggest Zs, or as I would say, Zs. You can save this as uh, a number and, and sort it, but I prefer to use Excel's power and I want to go conditional formatting, top bottom rules. I'm going to go top 10 items, but I don't want the top 10. I really just want the top three. And we'll do OK. And now I have highlighted the top three, but I do need to check that these are indeed spikes. And a spike is where the actual is higher than the Benford's Law. I'm spiking above the Benford's Law. We ignore the spikes below. Spiking above. So I can see here, the 1011 is spiking above. The 48 is spiking above. So when I go back here, 1011, 48, they're all spiking above. Those are indeed the three largest Zs but I want you to actually do the conditional formatting and to do that for yourself. And on that happy note, case number two is done. So from me to you, bye-bye.